about this graph a little bit. If this is an original function, okay, uh, the minimums are at negative 2, 0, and the origin 0, 0. The maximums are at approximately negative 1.12 and about 0.8. I call it 1 for the y value. Um, breaking it up, okay, we're increasing to begin with. Then, or excuse me, we are decreasing to begin with. Then we're increasing, decreasing, increasing, and then decreasing for the remainder of the function. Now, notice the, the intervals, okay? This is what we struggled with in pre-calculus. Everybody wants to use the y values to identify where it's increasing and decreasing, okay? But you've got to remember, you're describing what the y values are doing. You're using the x values to identify where that is happening. So it's decreasing from the far left side of our graph, so from negative infinity until we get to negative 2. Or the x values between negative infinity and negative 2, the y values are decreasing. Then between negative 2 and negative 1.1, our y values are increasing. Then between negative 1.1 and 0, the y values are decreasing. Between 0 and 0.8, they're increasing again. And then from 0.8 to positive infinity, for those x values, the y values are decreasing. This is one that people tend to get tripped up on. It's the infinities. Okay, again, remember when we're talking about left to right, the x values, what are the y values doing? So as x is approaching positive infinity, the y values are approaching negative infinity. So we use the x values to identify the intervals. Now, based on what we know about particle motion, we know that when our original function is decreasing or when our position is decreasing then our derivative is going to be negative or less than zero when it's increasing the derivative is going to be positive or greater than zero this is what we're going to focus on uh, for the next few days um, the connection between the function and its derivative and what this will tell us about the behavior of the function so, what I was mentioning before, when we were finding properties of functions, domain, range, intercepts, where it was increasing and decreasing, we graphed it with our calculator, we found the maximums and minimums using the calculator, and then we would always forget to use the x values to indicate the intervals. Calculus solves that problem, because you don't have to worry about the y values uh, yet. Okay? Um, let me get this to you in case we get there. So, we're going to determine increasing and decreasing intervals using the derivative. <clears throat> so, here's our test for increasing and decreasing functions. Like always, if your function is continuous and differentiable on an interval, then if your derivative is greater than zero or positive, then you can say that the original function is increasing on that interval. If the derivative is less than zero or negative on that interval, then your original function is decreasing. If your derivative equals zero for an interval of x values, then your function is constant on that interval. Now we know that if the derivative equals zero, we have a critical number. But if it's equal to zero on an interval, then your function is constant on that interval. So I'll give you a sec. Okay, so this is the same graph that we looked at just a minute ago. A minute ago I said that it was f. This time we're going to look at it from the perspective of this is f prime. Okay, so uh, let's figure out uh, what's happening on the original function if they give us the derivative. This is a very popular question on the AP exam. So first of all, we need to identify our critical numbers. Okay, our critical numbers in this case are where the derivative is equal to zero. So the derivative is equal to zero and negative two, zero, and one. I don't know why I just put parentheses right there. Okay, we have three critical points. Okay, so uh, then we're going to create a number line, okay, with 
those values on them. So I'm going to put negative 2, 0, and 1. Obviously, it's integral that you put those in the correct order. Okay. Then I'm going to pick a number within each of these intervals. So I'm going to pick a number to the left of negative 2. That would be negative 3. Okay. I don't have a function to plug it into here, so it really doesn't matter what number I pick. Um, I'm just going to pick a number between all of these, so negative 3, negative 1, uh, 1 half, and 2. Okay. So we want to know what is the sign of the derivative at these values. So negative 3, it's off of our picture here, but obviously it would be somewhere way up there. I don't care what the value is, I just care about the fact that it is positive. Negative 1, its y value is also positive. 1 half, its y value is positive. And 2, obviously it's off of our picture, but it is negative. So our conclusion here is that f is increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, okay, we do have to break it up. Even though it is positive until we get to 1, we still have to break it up because we don't really know what's happening at those critical points. There's no change in increasing and decreasing, um, but we don't know exactly that it's technically not increasing nor decreasing at those exact points. So our function is increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 0, 0 to 1, and then it's decreasing from positive 1 to positive infinity. Those are the conclusions that we can draw if this is our derivative when we're trying to talk about the original. Okay, let's look at a problem where we have the function root. Okay. Let's find the open intervals on which this function x cubed minus 3 halves x squared is increasing and decreasing. So x cubed minus 3 halves x squared. Now when you look at the function, it can never hurt to kind of give yourself a mental picture of what that function looks like. Okay, Cubic function, it is positive x cubed. So it's probably going to look something like this. I did purposefully make it go through the origin because I notice if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0 as an answer. Now, I don't know that it necessarily changes increasing and decreasing at 0, but this is what the function looks like. So we're anticipating two increasing intervals and one decreasing interval. may not be because some of our cubic functions are flatter, okay, but... Um, that's that's the greatest possibilities. Okay, so we take the derivative because we want to find our critical numbers. F prime of x is three x squared minus three uh, x. When you bring down the two, it cancels with the two in the denominator. Okay, we want to set that equal to zero. This is how you should always show your work, guys. You need to show the general derivative, then set it equal to zero. Um, I am going to go ahead and factor in the same step that I set it equal to zero just to save myself some time and, and space there. And then we set our factors equal to zero, 3x is equal to zero, x minus one is equal to zero. So we get zero and positive one as our critical numbers. So we're going to put those on a number line. We're going to test a number to the left of zero, negative one for example, a number in between, and a number greater. We're going to plug those into the derivative. So I kind of label mine like this. Okay, I put f prime down here at the bottom because I'm talking about what's the value of f prime. Now it's easiest to plug, the, uh, plug these numbers into the factored form. Okay, it's easiest to plug it into the factored form. So when I do that, I don't care about the value, I'm just concerned about the sign. So 3 times negative 1 is a negative number. Negative 1 minus 1 is another negative number, so I have a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. 3 times 1 half is positive. 
1 half minus 1 is negative. So a positive times a negative is a negative. 3 times 2 is positive. 2 minus 1 is positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. So I can say f of x equals x cubed minus 3 halves x squared. Technically, you usually don't have to write the function. I just did it for some reason this time. Is increasing from negative infinity to 0 and from 1 to positive infinity. And it is decreasing from 0 to 1. Actually, let me put some reasons in there. It is increasing because f prime is positive on those intervals. And it is decreasing from 0 to 1 because f prime is negative. <laughs> well, okay, so you've got two, I've seen this on both sections of the test. I've seen it on the multiple choice section, which obviously you don't have to provide any reasoning, you just need to recognize it. Uh, but these are often times on the free response as well, and you do have to provide reasoning. And I have been told that the number line with the sign test there is not sufficient enough explanation. They don't use that as an explanation. Um, you actually have to translate that into words. I mean, just exactly what I said right there. F of X is increasing on these intervals because F prime is positive. It can be as simple as that. You yeah. just actually have to. No. No, because you just listed the interval. Technically, you don't even have to say these intervals. It's just because f prime is positive and then decreasing on 0, 1 because f prime is negative. Okay, let's find the intervals for which this function is increasing and decreasing. Okay, this is a rational function. Okay, we need to set the derivative equal to, well, we need to take the derivative, first of all. Okay, so f prime of x is uh, low d high minus high d low all over low squared. This one will simplify, x minus 2 minus x. That makes life much nicer. x minus x is 0, so we've got negative 2 over x minus 2 squared is our derivative. Got to find our critical points. That's where the derivative is equal to 0. Well, this derivative will not equal 0 because, remember, a fraction equal to 0, the only way that's going to happen is if the numerator equals 0 and 0 does not equal negative 2. So we don't get a critical number from that, but remember we also get critical numbers from where the... Um, derivative is undefined. Well, that happens where the denominator is equal to zero. So if we take the square root, square root of zero, zero, add two. So two here is a critical point for us. So put that on a number line. We need to test the value to the left. Remember I said use zero as much as possible. This is an instance where we can use zero and 3. Okay, so again, we're not worried about the value of the derivative. We just want to know whether it's positive or negative. So when we plug in 0 into the derivative, we've got a negative divided by a positive because any number squared is positive. Um, so that's negative to the left of 2. When we plug in 3, the numerator is still negative. The denominator is still positive because we're still squaring a number 
Um, so our derivative is still negative. So our function does not change from increasing to decreasing. 2 is not an extrema, which we should know because if you think about it, this is a rational